Valentine's Day is almost there and I know a lot of you like to give gifts to people you care about, not just your partner if you have one, but family, friends, just loved ones in general. And what is more special than to give gifts that you made yourself, you know? I mean, anyone can buy a box of chocolates or flowers, not that there's anything wrong with that, but if you're creative like me, it is fun to make something yourself and hopefully the person you will give it to will appreciate all the time and effort and love you put into them. So I'm going to show you three fun crafts that will make three different sets of three gifts. Yes, <laughs> so three gifts in a set and I'm going to show you how to do three different sets. The first set is the easiest and the quickest to make, it's decorative candles. The second set is a set of squishies, which are so fun to make and so fun to squish and play with. I just love squishies. <laughs> and the third one is uh, chocolates, but they're also magnets, which is so cute. You'll need three cylinder candles, a red one, a pink one, and a white one. You'll also need pink and red diamond tape, pink heart-shaped sprinkles, white iridescent glitter, sparkle Mod Podge, a full brush, and a plastic container. Painter's tape and scissors are handy too. Wrap the red diamond tape around your white candle to see how much you'll need and cut it. Cut a piece of pink diamond tape of the same size. Leave some space from the bottom of the candle, peel off the sticky part of the red diamond tape and stick the tape onto your candle. Make sure the ends don't overlap, so trim if you need to. Leave some space from your red diamond tape and stick your pink diamond tape around the candle too. pink candle, leave some space from the bottom of the candle and stick some painter's tape around your candle to get a clean line. Put some sparkle Mod Podge into your container and brush it onto the part of the candle below your tape. You can put a piece of printer paper onto your workspace for easier cleanup and to save your glitter. Sprinkle a generous amount of glitter onto the Mod Podge and shake and tap the candle a few times to get rid of any loose glitter that's not sticking to the Mod Podge. The white color of the Mod Podge will dry transparent with sparkles because it's Sparkle Mod Podge and it will combine beautifully with the glitter. Remove the painter's tape and let dry. To put the glitter back into the jar, just grab your paper, bend it, and pour it back into its container. Grab your red candle, leave some space from the bottom of the candle, and stick some painter's tape around your candle to mark where you want your sprinkles to be. Put more of your Mod Podge into your container. Look how pretty that sparkle Mod Podge is! Brush a very generous amount onto the part of the candle below your tape. Do this in stages. Put some sprinkles onto your workspace and start putting them onto your glue. I found that it's easiest to just grab some sprinkles and sprinkle them into the glue and then make sure they're all flat. Because we're using Sparkle Mod Podge, the sprinkles don't have to touch each other. Every gap will reveal the sparkle, making it far more beautiful than if you were to use regular Mod Podge.
printer's tape and let dry. You'll need a two components pourable flexible polyurethane foam. I'm using the Flex Foam It 3 from Smooth On. You're gonna make three squishies, so you'll also need three silicone molds in different shapes, a plastic container, two small containers for measuring, two stir sticks, and rubber gloves. To decorate the squishies, you'll need three deep paints, a container for water, paint brushes, and a rag. Put some paper onto your work surface so you can throw it away afterwards. Also make sure you're working in a well-ventilated area as this stuff is toxic. Open a window or turn your air purifier on if you have one. Put on your gloves and shake the yellow bottle and one of the blue bottles very well. Open the blue bottle and fill one of the measuring containers all the way. Pour it into your bigger container. Fill the same measuring container all the way with the blue component again and pour it into your bigger container. Close the bottle immediately. So now you have two parts of the blue components. Stir very well. Now we need to add our second component, which is in the yellow bottle. Fill the clean measuring container with the yellow component. All the way, or a tiny bit less for a slower rising squishy, like I did. Close the jar immediately. Stir it with a clean stir stick and then pour it into your bigger container. Mix the two components very well and very quickly because you only have about 15 seconds until the chemical reaction begins. Once your mixture is mixed, quickly pour a little bit into each of your molds. You'll see how quickly it turns into a foam and starts expanding. Let dry for a few hours. out of their molds and test them out. You may be thinking, but Renata, yours aren't very slow rising. 
Just wait until we're done. They'll get quite a bit more slow rising once they've been painted. Now it's time to start decorating them. Grab your 3D paints and mix custom colors if you need to. Usually they'll need quite a few layers. So make sure you let the layers dry now and then before adding the next layer. In case you're wondering if you can paint these with regular acrylic paints, the answer is no. They're squishy so you need to be able to squish them without the paint cracking. That's why 3D paint or fabric paint is ideal. The process of painting your squishies is time consuming but don't rush the steps of painting and drying and painting and drying. Just let it air dry. Don't be tempted to use a blow dryer to speed things up either. You'll need Fimo Soft in the colors Chocolate, Caramel and Vanilla. I didn't end up using the white that's shown here. You'll also need a clay roller, a flexible clay blade, three magnets and E6000 glue. Clay sculpting tools can come in handy too. Optional are Fimo Mix Quick, a serrated blade, Fimo Gloss Varnish and an extruder craft gun. Begin by kneading some Fimo chocolate. As mine is very crumbly, I need to knead in a lot of mix quick to soften it and get it ready to work with. Once that's done, roll your clay into a ball and press it a little flatter, but make sure the palm of your hand is a bit curved so that the top isn't flat but rounded. Make an indentation in the top middle area and shape your clay into a hard chocolate. Make sure it's big enough for the magnets. Soften a little bit of Fimo Vanilla. We need a few strings. You can do that using the extruder craft gun or just by hand. My clay needed to be even softer to be able to work with the extruder craft gun because I pushed on it with my full weight and it still didn't come out. So I just did it with uh, by hand instead. Place a few strings of vanilla over your chocolate heart to make it look like a white chocolate drizzle. Soften more Fimo vanilla. We're going to make our second chocolate. All of my clay that has been opened is quite crumbly, so if you see me mixing in white stuff, it's just a mix quick to soften it. Roll the clay into a ball, flatten it a bit, and then shape it like a square or rectangle rounded chocolate. If your clay gets dirty, which often happens with lighter colors, you can wipe it with a wet wipe and that will get rid of most of the dirt. Soften a little bit of Fimo chocolate. Shape it into a chocolate coffee bean and place onto your vanilla chocolate.
Again, make sure it's big enough to cover your magnets. Soften some Fimo Caramel. Roll it into a ball and shape it into a rectangular shape. Flatten using your clay roller. Cut off the edges to make them straight, then soften the corners and the edges using your fingers. Make sure your shape is big enough for your magnet. Turn your shape into a chocolate bar by making indentations with a clay sculpting tool. Cut out a piece suggesting the chocolate has been bitten. The idea was to make two of these layers and then another color in between for the filling. But at this point my hands were so sore, I decided to leave it like this and I really regret that because it doesn't look nearly as good as how it was intended. I highly recommend adding the extra layers. Preheat the oven at 110 degrees Celsius or 225 degrees Fahrenheit. Place your Fimo chocolates onto a thick piece of glass and bake for 30 minutes. Let cool. If you want to add a bit of shine to your chocolates, add some Fimo varnish. Let dry and then glue the magnets onto the back of your chocolates with E6000 glue. If you can find magnets that don't have a cover, I recommend those. I couldn't find any and I tried to get the ones I had out of their cover, but that didn't work so I had to leave it on. Let dry. I really hope you enjoyed watching these craft tutorials and the video was fun to watch. If you did enjoy it, please don't forget to click the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching, happy Valentine's Day and I'll see you soon with my next video. Bye!